For more than a decade, Civil 3D has included a tool called SubAssembly Composer for the creation of custom subassembly parts. While custom parts are extremely valuable, they often present challenges when updates are required or when drawings using them are shared with others. Now, in Civil 3D 2024, custom subassemblies can be managed as easily as an external reference. Let's take a look. On my screen, I have a drawing that represents a proposed roadway reconstruction. And underneath the roadway, I have an alignment that I'd like to use to create a proposed box culvert. I'm going to be modeling that box culvert as a corridor, and I'll be using a custom subassembly part for that. Just for a second, I'm going to come down to Subassembly Composer, and we'll take a look at the part that I'll be using. From here, I'll go to File, Open, and inside my PKT Files folder, I've got this part called Box Culvert Surfs 2. I'll select that and click Open. And you can see the part over here. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Let's minimize this. And back in Civil 3D, I am going to create an assembly. I'll come up to the Create Design panel and launch the assembly command. I'll choose Create Assembly. I'll call it Box Culvert, and I'll keep the default settings, and I'll click OK. I will then click to place this close to where my corridor is going to be built. I will then select the assembly, and from the ribbon, I'll choose to bring up the tool palette. In the tool palette, you can see that I've created a custom tab called Custom Parts. To create that tab, I simply right-clicked on one of these other tabs and chose New Palette from the menu, and then I gave the palette a name. Once the palette has been created, I can add my custom subassemblies to this palette by right-clicking on the tab, and from the menu, I'll choose Import Subassemblies. In Civil 3D 2024, we have this new option that's selected by default that says Link Directly to PKT Files. Prior to 2024, when we would add PKT files to these tabs, it would create copies of those files within our program data folder. And that's what made things complicated if the PKTs were ever updated and resaved, or if we were trying to share those or exchange them with others. Now, it's linking directly to the file itself, in which case it operates very much like an external reference. For this example, my source file, I will come down and click the folder icon, and then I will grab that PKT file that we just looked at. And I'll choose Open. I'm going to put that in the Custom Parts tab, and I'll click OK. And then once it's here, I'm going to right-click on it, and let's refresh the image to kind of clean that up a little bit. Perfect. At this point, the item that we see on this tool palette is pointing directly to that PKT file. Now I'd like to incorporate it into my drawing. I'll click on it, and then I'll click to place this at the insertion point. When I do that, the path for that part was passed to this drawing. This object in the drawing now remembers where that path is, where it's located. In fact, in 2024, if we go over to the Prospector tab, there is a subassemblies group. If I expand this, we can see the custom subassembly parts that we're using. And if I select this custom part, down here at the bottom in the preview area, I can see the part name. I can see the source path where it's coming from. If I drag this over, I can also see the version number if I choose to edit that within Subassembly Composer and I can see the current status says OK. Let's build a corridor from this assembly. I'll come up and choose Corridor, launch the Corridor command. I'm going to create a corridor called Proposed Culvert. We'll use the Route 38 Culvert Alignment and Profile. I'll use my Box Culvert Assembly, and then for the frequency, let's insert the assembly every five feet. I'll click OK and we'll rebuild. And then by default, my corridors are built using a plottable style, so it's just showing the longitudinal geometry. I'm going to select this, and I'll go over to the Properties palette, and I will change this to a working style. There we go. Now we can see all the assembly insertions. Okay, so I've added to the file. Now let's consider what happens if this PKT file changes. Once again, I'll go back to Subassembly Composer. And I'm going to make some noticeable changes. I'll grab this link, for instance, and I'm going to hard code a distance on this. We'll make it negative 12. And I'll grab this link, and I will make this a positive 12. Okay, I've got input-output parameters that I could use to adjust the geometry, but I'm kind of simulating a change. What if I added new links? What if I changed codes or something like that? This file is now physically different than it was before. I'm going to choose File, Save. And then I will return to Civil 3D. And if I wait long enough, eventually over here in the tool space, it will pop up and show me that that file is out of date. 
To kind of speed things along, I can right click on the subassemblies group and choose refresh. And when I do, you can see the icons pop up here. If I select my box culvert subassembly part down here in the preview area, once again, we can see the information, but if I drag down to the right, I can see it's out of date. This drawing knows that the file that this part is attached to has changed. To update things, I can simply right click on the part and choose update all subassemblies. I can then click OK. You'll see the change on screen and then I can rebuild my corridor. I'll right click on that and choose rebuild. OK, so I didn't have to close out of Sybil 3D. I didn't have to do anything magic with the tool palettes. I simply had to refresh that part to update my drawing. Knowing this, you can store your PKT files in a centralized location on your server or even in Autodesk Docs. As long as stakeholders have access to the folder where these files are stored, they can leverage them in their drawings and they can update them without any problems, even if things change. One quick note, if you choose to save these in Autodesk Docs, the intention would be that the drawings that use them would also be in Docs. By doing that, it will ensure that the file pathing is maintained between stakeholders. All right, let's look at one more thing. What if the PKT file is moved? If I right click on this PKT file and cut, I will then go into the exercise files folder and let's simulate maybe this gets moved to the wrong folder. Let's paste. If I go back to exercise files and we go into PKT, you can see that this is empty now. Once again, in Civil 3D, I could wait to get the notification or I could right click on this and choose refresh. When I do, you can see the icon changed. If I select this, we can see that the file is not found. To make the correction, I will right click and choose fix missing paths. I will then select my desired item. I will grab the folder where that PKT file lives and click open and apply. And everything is refreshed and I'm right back in business. As you can see, using Civil 3D 2024, the PKT files created from SubAssembly Composer are treated much like an external reference. So long as all stakeholders have access to the saved file path, local or cloud, any updates or revisions can be accomplished with just a couple clicks of the mouse.